And joining us on the line from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Tony Berman, Managing Director of Al Jazeera English. Tony, good to see you again. How are you? Great to see you. I'm fine. Great to see you. I Steve. guess we should say full disclosure off the top. I used to work for you at CBC, so we get that on the record so everybody knows that. Uh, if in those days when uh, I was working for you, you and I had a conversation and I at the time mentioned Al Jazeera, what would have gone through your mind at the time? Well, I mean, I would have been intrigued. I think most Canadians are intrigued by it. Uh, you know, my, my, I guess my understanding and appreciation of Al Jazeera well before I, I even contemplated working for it was generally positive because I think that anything that is detested so much by Bush, Rumsfeld, and Cheney must have some redeeming merit to it. <laughs> How is it you ended up working for these guys? Well, I mean, I left the CBC after a wonderful career that was incredibly enriching, and then... Uh, I worked as a consultant for a while, and they knew me, I knew them, and um, they asked me whether I would work for them and kind of in some sort of capacity. I said, sure, but in a limited way, because Doha, Qatar is very far away, but then they offered me the managing director's job and kind of made it, uh, made it persuasive in that it really was a, uh, a channel that I really wanted to help change and help improve. So now they want into Canada and you've got an application before the broadcast regulator, the CRTC, to make that happen. Exactly. So let's find out a little bit more about it. For example, who owns the channel? It, the channel's owned by the government of Qatar. It's not unlike, actually, not unlike the Canadian government owning the CBC or the British government owning the BBC. I mean, it's a public broadcaster in that sense of the word. M most, not all of our, our funding comes from the government. Does so they have commercials on it? They do. Limited. Limited commercials, but I think that'll grow. I mean, I think the goal is to make it financially self-sufficient in time. Is it, editorially speaking, a truly independent voice? Totally, totally. I mean, there's a, there's a firewall between the government and Al Jazeera. I've been there more than a year. I haven't detected one uh, inkling of, uh, of attempted influence by the government. In fact, I've had zero contact with the government. I mean, in, in reality, I mean, as the editor-in-chief of the CBC for nearly eight years, I had a clearer sense of what the Canadian government wanted of its public broadcaster than I do working in Doha with Al Jazeera. Okay, but there's certainly a sense that Al Jazeera isn't fond of Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld, and neither, I guess, are, are most of the governments in the Arab world. So can you say that it's truly an independent voice? It is truly an independent voice. I mean, we have a staff of, uh, of more than 1,200 people from 50 nationalities. Uh, the leadership comes from uh, the BBC, CNN, from CBC. Um, there's no, no, there's no kind of um, institutional um, view about Bush, Cheney, and, uh, and, and Rumsfeld. I mean, I think the, you know, the skepticism uh, throughout the world, outside perhaps of the Republican Party, uh, towards that administration, uh, you know, is pretty widespread. I think that the, uh, you know, the attitude of Al Jazeera was very challenging of that administration. It's very challenging of the Obama administration, you know, but it's not, not in any sense of bias, but in a sense of, of journalistic accountability and our feeling that we, you know, we serve a wider interest than simply fawning after what the U.S. government does. Okay, in which case, complete the following sentence for me. Canadians should see Al Jazeera because what you'd see on Al Jazeera English that you don't see on the rest of the dial is what? It is coverage of, of most parts of the world that go unreported and certainly underreported by every other media, broadcast media available in Canada. I mean, we have uh, coverage of Africa, Latin America, coverage of Asia uh, from areas of the world that, you know, that, that never penetrate uh, Canadian or, or American. Uh, broadcast networks. Uh, also, in terms of stories that um, you know that are commonly covered by by all networks, I think we bring to the table a, a, a far more global, less parochial, less Western perspective. So I think it's a it's a view of the world, a global view of the world that I think a lot of Canadians who have a far more internationalist perspective, you know, in in news and current affairs than than is widely acknowledged. It's a view of the world that I think a lot of people would appreciate. You know fairly or unfairly this perception is out there, so I'm going to give you a chance to, to hit it right on the head right now. Right. Al Jazeera is perceived in many corners as being Al-Qaeda's favorite TV channel. What's your well, view on that? Yeah, well, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, anyone who looks at the history of, uh, of Al Jazeera Arabic would realize that, you know, when it was created in 1996, right until 9-11 in 2001, it was perceived by Western governments, including the U.S. government, the Clinton White House, as the poster child for an organization that was strengthening Arab democracy. It was only 
after 9-11, when, when Al Jazeera had the temerity to actually report the contrary to what was being claimed by the Americans, that civilians were being killed in Afghanistan, that, that Rumsfeld and Bush and Cheney turned on it. I mean, in reality, um, bin Laden has often accused Al Jazeera of being pro-American, pro-Zionist. Um, you know, the, 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 the fabled videos that, that have gone to Al Jazeera and have also gone to other networks is due to the fact that Al Jazeera is, is, the, is the leading Arab channel. In the same way that when the American Unibomber leaked uh, his documents to the New York Times, I don't recall anyone accusing the New York Times of endorsing terrorism. Not of endorsing terrorism, but there were plenty of people who were pretty uncomfortable with that decision to publish. Are there similarly, therefore, you know, people who are entitled to feel uncomfortable about what may be too close a relationship between Al-Qaeda and their, their ability to get their tapes on that channel. No, I, I think that whole myth of an of a inappropriate relationship between Al-Qaeda and Al Jazeera is nonsense. And I think that we've got to, you know, actually look at the facts. The fact is 9-11 occurred in September 2001. In October 2001, um, bin Laden gave his first interview. It was to Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera was the only network that never ran that interview. Al Jazeera didn't run that interview because it felt, the leadership in Doha felt, that the conditions imposed on Al Jazeera by Al Qaeda on Al Jazeera's interviewer were, were totally unsatisfactory. A week went by, nothing happened. Al Qaeda became very upset that bin Laden's statement to the world was not being broadcast. It leaked it. CNN was the first world broadcaster that broadcast that interview. Rumsfeld criticized Al Jazeera for that. But in reality, I mean, that is an example of the kind of distance that Al Jazeera has always had uh, towards uh, Al Qaeda and towards bin Laden. You know, and I think that if one goes back into the history of that relationship, one realizes that these stereotypes that you're talking about and that I'm dealing with, you know, night after night in Canada are stereotypes that flow from the kind of the political partisan aftershocks of 9-11 and the Republican kind of administration in the U.S. That period is over and I think a lot of Americans and certainly a lot of Canadians are now kind of open to a accurate, you know, more, more balanced a sense of the history of, of that period. Let me get a greater sense then, Tony, of what you feel the, the sort of underlying values are that infuse the channel. You, you can't watch, for example, uh, an American network, a Canadian television network, uh, without, I think, coming away from the, with the conclusion that you know, these stations essentially believe in the, in the pro-Western form of government, right. in, in the, the values that inculcate the society. Would you come away feeling that after watching 24 hours of Al Jazeera? You would, and I think that, that, you know, that Al Jazeera now is available in 140 million households in more than 100 countries in the world. And, and you know, most of them, many of them, are, are democratic and that cherish the kind of values that we all support. I think the, the difference is that you would find, I think, in a lot of the conventional networks, certainly BBC and CNN, a focus on the, the Western power centers. I think that Al Jazeera is Al Jazeera English, is focused, is the, the only uh, international channel that's located in, in the global south. Its lens is very much the perspective of the developing world. It tries to bring to the stage the voiceless, those the peripheral part of the world, dare I say the majority of, of humanity, who often get ignored and marginalized by the centers of power. What it means at the end of the day to a Canadian or to an American is that you have a far more comprehensive, a far more balanced view of the issues in front of us. It's not biased, it's not ideological, but what it is, it's, it's a greater reflection of the totality of this, of this planet than you get in the kind of the narrow uh, Western-centric, American-centric um, coverage that most of us you know, have had in front of us for years. Now you are managing director of Al Jazeera English, and right. there is of course Al Jazeera Arabic. What's Correct. the difference between the two? Well, they're two separate channels in a, in a, in a uh, multimedia company that has many channels and many different divisions. I mean, the comparison I often use would be Rupert Nur Murdoch's News Corporation, where you have the Times of London, you have Sky, you have Fox, you have the Sun newspaper, and these are all uh, separate independent brands within, within one uh, complicated multimedia company. That's what exists uh, in, within, within Al Jazeera. I'm the head of Al Jazeera English. I have total autonomy and my, my, my staff have total autonomy in terms of what we broadcast. There, there is absolutely no editorial influence or no 
uh, editorial kind of uh, impact on the, by, uh, by Al Jazeera Arabic on our program any more than there is in the reverse. We share resources when we can. We try to be cost effective as much as we can, but I mean, we're dealing with different audiences. And, and I think in that sense, um, you know, the, 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 what's in front of the CRTC, and I think the exciting thing in front of Canadians is that this channel, you know, has been on the air for two years. It, it's, uh, you know, regulated by Ofcom in Britain, and it's passed, uh, you know, all of its standards with flying colors for more than two and a half years. So I think in that sense, it's, a, it's an independent, autonomous channel that, you know, that really has a track record that's quite award-winning and important. You know, of course, that there are some groups, obviously mostly Jewish groups in Canada, that are concerned about the possibility of Al Jazeera English getting a license. And I want to mm -hmm. read one thing to you here and then have you comment on it. Uh, according to the Toronto Star, a host on Al Jazeera Arabic, a talk show, praised Hezbollah, which Western countries obviously think of as a terrorist organization, referred to Zionists as dogs. Uh, critics say this is but one example of sort of anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic messages that uh, are found too frequently, they would say, on the Arabic network. And obviously they are concerned that that will infuse itself on the English side, and we're going to be seeing that in Canada. To which you say what? Well, uh, two things. Number one, I think if you go into all of these, these, uh, these accounts of alleged uh, anti-Semitism or, or, or inappropriate language, uh, you'll discover that they, none of them uh, were on Al Jazeera uh, Arabic, the main, the, the main channel. There is this separate channel, which is effectively like C-SPAN or like CPAC, which is a kind of a speaker's corner, live sermons, live speeches, and on occasion, very rarely, I think there have been three occasions in the past three or four years, there have been very, you know, hateful language, and, and which obviously to anyone is outrageous. There has been, just by the by, hateful language also, you know, voiced in Israeli media. I mean, this thing goes two ways. I think that, um, you know, there's a code of ethics that Al Jazeera Arabic adheres to in the same way that Al Jazeera English that makes this kind of of programming inappropriate. So you wouldn't find that on the main channel. But I think the important thing is that what's in front of the CRTC, what is being offered to Canadians, is a channel, an award-winning channel called Al Jazeera English that's been on the air for nearly two and a half years, has a track record, has you know two years, more than two years of programming to point to. The notion that somehow, because of some kind of uh, influence beyond Al Jazeera English might affect it, et cetera, et cetera, is nonsense. I mean, any more than one worries that all of a sudden, you know, the, 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 you know, the elements of, of News Corp will affect Times of London. I think we're, we're standing on our record. I think that, you know, that if any channel, not only Al Jazeera, if the CBC, or dare I say, if TVO falls off the rails after we're introduced into Canadian homes, and the CRTC has every ability, and they've done it in the past, to uh, change the license and take the station off the air. I think in our case, we're incredibly proud, as many of our viewers are, in the kind of track record we have. And I guess we should say you're on the air in Israel, aren't you? Uh, we're definitely on the air in Israel. In fact, the BBC was bounced from one of the most popular satellite channels in Israel to make uh, accommodation for Al Jazeera English because of viewer demand. And I think we're widely watched in Israel, and, and, and which makes the whole notion that it's, it's anti-Semitic or that might be anti-Semitic or that it might be anti-Israeli, I mean, a bogus argument. It's a fraudulent argument. I think the Israelis, who are incredibly savvy politically, realize that, you know, that their, their, their ticket to security and to prosperity is to understand their environment and to get a sense of the diversity of views that are in front of them. And I think that's the kind of thing that we know Canadians want. And our, you know, Canada is one of the only countries in the world where Al Jazeera uh, English and Al Jazeera Arabic are not available. You know, so we're simply, we're not asking that Al Jazeera English be forced on Canadians. We're just asking that, that the Canadians be given the opportunity to choose for themselves whether they want to watch this channel. And I think the indication we're getting overwhelmingly is positive. And in the last 30 seconds here, Tony, two quick things. When do you find out if you get the channel into Canada? Well, well I mean, we're in this public consultation period, which ends, I think, on June 8th, and the CRTC makes a, a decision, which we hope will occur sometime in the summer, you know, and hopefully, and we are hopeful and confident that we'll get the household seal of approval from the CRTC, and then it's really up to the cable and satellite providers to then to put us on their system. They've indicated to us, most of them have indicated to us that they want Al Jazeera English uh, immediately. I mean, they realize that there's a real market and there's a real interest in it. So our goal would be that we will have this kind of all wrapped up 
uh, you know, in, by September, October, if the process unfolds as, as, as we hope it will. I got a rep from Rogers coming up later in the program. I'll ask him for you. One last thing. Uh, Al Jazeera, I think, is Arabic for peninsula. Why do they call the, why do they call the channel peninsula? Well, I mean, it's uh, that Qatar, if you look at the map, Qatar juts into the Arabian Gulf. It sits right beside Saudi Arabia, and it sits on a peninsula into the Arabian Gulf. So I think Al Jazeera, as the, as the network, is an acknowledgment of, the, of the, you know, the physical uniqueness of Qatar, the state. Gotcha. Good to see you again, Tony. Thanks for Great. coming Good on to TVO tonight. Thank you, Steve. Good night.